tonight we're going to be making a sweet potato hash. So we got our cast iron skillet here heating up. We're going to add some avocado oil to this. I like using avocado oil more than olive oil because it has a higher smoke point. And then, this is not focusing. And then we're going to add some onions to these. Probably about the equivalent of maybe two big onions. Because we're doing enough probably for a week's worth of meals. And it's just for me, because Nick doesn't like this. <laughs> but, so you salt the onions a little bit. We're going to get those caramelizing. And I should let you know that this, we do not have a recipe for this. <laughs> but, Nick actually developed this. He's a really good cook. Much better cook than I am. I'm the better baker. So there's many ways you can do this recipe. Honestly, it's just one of those things where you just kind of throw a bunch of stuff together. There's a few basic things that I always include, but for the most part, I just throw in whatever I have. So Charlie likes these broccoli stems. That's his veggie for the day. He's silly boy. Okay, so I got onions going. I also like to throw some kind of vegetable that's in the brassica family. So broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, any of those types of things. So I have Brussels sprouts and we cut these broccoli stems off the broccoli for a different meal so I'll use the broccoli stems in this as well. Whenever I'm cutting up stuff, Charlie is always right at my feet because he knows I am messy and clumsy and I constantly drop stuff and he knows I'm just going to give him stuff, so he's not stupid. Okay, so I got my broccoli stems and I'm the thing I always put in this sweet potato hash is sweet potatoes. I don't like sweet potatoes any other way except for in this dish. I'm just going to peel all these and then cube them. So with the Brussels sprouts, I'm just trimming off the ends and either having them or quartering them, depending on how large they are. Okay, so once the onions are done caramelizing, all of this will go in. Yeah. Okay, so onions are mostly caramelized. Sweet potatoes. Oops, rock the barley. And uh, broccoli stems come in. And then all of the broccoli stuff. You can throw just about any vegetable you want in there. I like the combination of the sweet potatoes with the anything in the broccoli family. Except for cauliflower. Cauliflower would be weird. I've done it with kale, I've done it with cabbage, broccoli. Any of those. I've turned zucchini in. So basically just what I have in there, but I always put onions in and I always put sweet potatoes in. And at this point Nick usually takes over for me because Nick is actually the better cook. He's really good at seasoning stuff without a recipe. Fresh pepper? Fresh pepper. Not fresh pepper. <laughs> I grew up on a pepper farm. <laughs> I think we're almost out of pepper. Do you need more? Yes. Yeah. 
We'll be seasoning with, we obviously put some salt in there, but Hungarian paprika. How much do you think you put in there? I have no idea. About that much. <laughs> garlic. And this is garlic granules. And then just a small pinch of cayenne pepper. Not too much. Or it gets spicy. We found that if you add cayenne pepper at the beginning, and just a little bit, it just adds some really nice flavor to it without being too spicy. But if you add it at the end, when it's already done cooking, it's just going to be spicy. It's not going to have that nice flavor. It still has a mild heat to it, but it's not as overpowering. So we'll add some more. There we go. Okay, and a little salt. Uh oh, jump out. I try not to overdo it with the salt at the beginning because you can always add some at the end. The other seasonings are nice to put in toward the beginning because it will help them cook and meld together as it uh, cooks down and they'll get stirred in a lot better. The salt, the salt is just to taste. I guess the other seasonings are to taste too, aren't they? <laughs> and there we go. So to help this cook a little faster, we put a cookie sheet over the top of the pan because this pan's big enough that we don't have a lid that will fit it, so. Once those are done, mostly cooking, then we'll add the burger. Okay. So we'll brown that up nice. And then the last thing I like to add to it, which it doesn't necessarily need it, but the only grain I can pretty much have right now in any quantity is uh, brown rice. So, but I have to make sure it's soaked so it's easier to digest when I do that. So, we're constantly soaking rice and I just always have it available in the fridge in large amounts. So, I have that all ready to go and I'll just add that to the pan after the hamburger's done. When Annie's having hash, I'm having a Chicken and cheese quesadilla. Made with spelt flour tortillas. Okay, burger is done. So now I'm just going to add my pre-cooked brown rice. So this looks like a lot, and it is a lot, but we make really big meals because a lot of times when we get home, we're really busy with farm projects, so we don't have time to cook all the time. So when we do have time to cook, we cook really big meals so we can have lots of leftovers throughout the week. And that's our sweet potato hash.